Well, we didn't have to wait very long to hear about the fate of Conference USA. On Friday, the conference announced the invitations of four schools to join the league. While some predicted the total collapse of the conference, Conference USA boldly moved forward with a strategic direction to regrow the league. It's been reported that up to 30 schools contacted Conference USA with the interest in joining. Conference Commissioner Judy McLeod stated that, the, that they were very deliberate in their efforts to invite schools for competition, noting that it was a quality mix of established and emerging universities. This may prove to be a seminal moment for Conference USA to rise from the ashes of this year's realignment commotion, showing that they're not just scrambling for existence, but that they're planning for the future with optimism. With the addition of these four schools, Conference USA would round out their future membership at nine, exceeding the requirement to have at least eight schools to remain in existence. Interesting to note that the current geographical footprint wouldn't change very much with the addition of these schools. However, it has been reported that Western Kentucky University and Middle Tennessee State University are fielding offers to join the Mid-American Conference, which will require CUSA to invite at least one more member to stay afloat. With the interest of 30 schools and a strategic focus as laid out by the Conference Commissioner, Conference USA should have no problem finding the right fit for at least one school to, be jo to join by 2023. I expect them to get back to at least 12, maybe even 14. However, it may prove to be useful just to have 10 so you're splitting less money or more money between less schools. Let's take a look at the future conference makeup of Conference USA. We have the established schools, or the current schools that are in the conference that are not leaving, starting with Louisiana Tech. Uh, they're an established program for sure. They've been around uh, the D1 ranks and the FBS level for a very long time. They put a pretty competitive uh, product on the field. Um, you know, they're, they're up some years, they're down some years, but they're fairly competitive overall. Florida International University, even though they're already playing in the conference, I would consider it an emerging school. Interesting to note that they're in the Miami TV market, which is pretty large, number 16. Uh, but a question remains, how many eyeballs do they actually get in that market where something like Louisiana Tech, who's in a much smaller market, probably dominates uh, the, TV, the TV eyeballs in that regard. Looking at UTEP, they're a lot like Louisiana Tech, whereas they've been around quite a few years. They have an established football tradition. Uh, they've played uh, a lot of competition. They're up and down here and there, of course. Uh, but uh, they've got several things going for them, uh, specifically in their facilities. They've got the Sun Bowl, where they host the annual Sun Bowl every year. It's so really, they have a lot of support and um, great competition. Now, one great thing about the new conference makeup is that they were considered the geographic outliers for a very long time in a very big conference. Uh, UTEP is located at least 900 miles from their nearest competitor. In the future, they would have basically their crosstown rival, New Mexico State, in the league. So that's great for them. It's also great for the conference overall because you have a travel partner uh, with New Mexico State. The incoming schools, you've got Liberty University. We're currently playing a pretty good football at the FBS level as an independent. They're also what I might call an emerging university, but they're established at the FBS level. They bring a lot of uh, quality to the league. I think it's also in their best interest. They have noted when they joined the ASUN League that they had a lot of recruits from Florida. So playing in Conference USA where they have Florida International to, to play with, uh, then they've got uh, a lot of recruiting eyeballs from Florida, which is a great thing. One thing to note, uh, they have over 80,000 online students, right? So their campus residential students, fairly small, 15,000. But this is a consideration that I think we're going to have to look at for all schools in the future in regards to athletics and specifically FBS football. The future of education is online. So you're going to have people who are studying at Liberty University living in Kansas and may never make it to Virginia. So what is the impact of a sports team that might play in the Central Time Zone or even the Mountain West Time Zone? Uh, maybe you'll be able to pick up their game uh, in a time zone near you. Maybe you'll be able to visit a football game in Texas or something like that. 
something to think about in the future that we really haven't engaged with uh, historically. Sam Houston State University has established their desire to play FBS for some time now. They were one of the instigators in four schools leaving the Southland Conference to create an FCS football league in the WAC with the intention of elevating to FBS. So there's no question about their investment in growing. However, they have a little bit of work to do. Even though they put a quality football team on the field, they won the 2019 FCS championship and they have plenty of conference titles. You know, they have their stadium still pretty small. They've got some investment to do before 23. They have to get to at least 15, I think maybe 16. So they have to improve their stadium capacity. And this is curious. I got these numbers from NC, from the NCAA directly. It says that they only have a 4878 as their average home attendance, which is three times less than the FBS requirement. Maybe somebody in Texas can let us know if that's a typo, if they actually get more than 5,000 people per game. But it seems curious. New Mexico State University, in my opinion, is a shoe-in. They probably should have been in the league a long time ago, but they were forced to play as an independent for the last 11 years. Now, they may not be a great set of competition in regards to football just now, even though they recently went to the Arizona Bowl. But they're a great school, and they have a great tradition in things like men's basketball, where they've been to the NCAA tournament uh, at least 25 times. And they have all the facilities and engagement that they need to play at that level. Jacksonville State University is also one of those emerging universities, smaller in size, but absolutely over-delivers on the field. They've been known to upset at least a few FBS teams, including Florida State this year, so that'll be interesting to see. One thing to note is the bowl affiliation and the importance of having Conference USA round out their membership. One of the things that conferences do is maintain the relationship with those bowl games. I think it's important to recognize that the invitation of schools to a conference is more than just TV and exposure. There's lots of considerations that both the school and the conference have to take a look at uh, before they decide to either invite a school or accept an invitation to be a part of a conference. Now, as was stated, the interest of 30 schools, it sounds like Conference USA really isn't going to have a problem finding a school or two to be able to add for the future. Uh, but there's plenty of schools out there that match that strategic view that uh, Commissioner Judy McLeod had already established. Here are some of the schools that I thought that might be interesting um, and that also fit that criteria. I think the two shoe-ins have to be the football-only invites with UMass and UConn up in the Northeast. They provide travel partners for each other, and they're already playing at the FBS level. Now, it doesn't do much for Olympic sports, but it definitely keeps the team afloat or the league afloat and uh, might provide for some interesting matchups, even though the competition up there, at least lately, hasn't been that great. So looking at the list of schools that I've come up with, I think it's interesting to note that several of these fit within uh, a specific geographic footprint, which really is a strong position. You really also want to build uh, regional rivalries. You want to have schools that people can drive to so that you have this developed relationship. And uh, it also makes sense from a cost perspective. Uh, it's interesting to know that schools like Chattanooga, who play quality football at the FCS level, are nearby uh, Jacksonville State. Kennesaw State, Eastern Kentucky is up there, not too far of a driving distance from Liberty University. Um, schools like Stephen F. Austin are already the main rival to Sam Houston State. That could prove to be uh, interesting, as well as McNeese State, who typically plays quality football. I think it'd be really interesting as well um, to add some of the HBCUs. I, I don't know if they have any interest because they have a lot of tradition in their current conferences. But Jackson State University in Jackson, Mississippi has a really powerful fan base. They have an average attendance of at least 25,000 at their games. So it might be interesting to round out that southeast corner and give FIU a travel partner. So in any case, it looks like things are going great. They're only getting better. Conference USA is doing all right. They're getting good grades, and I think the future's so bright, they gotta wear shades. <laughs>